So here's the deal. I found some skunk cabbage on my walk today. Um, it's a very interesting plant for a lot of reasons, but I knew that it is reportedly poisonous. And because I'm stupid and stubborn, stupid and stubborn, stupid and stubborn, and don't really believe something unless I try it myself, I had to try some. Don't do this at home, kids. It's a bad idea. Stay tuned for why. Hey guys, I wasn't really planning on bringing you along on this walk, but right behind me here, we have some skunk cabbage, which sprouts very early spring. And it's an interesting looking plant, but it's also interesting for a few other reasons. It emits its own heat, like melting the snow around it because it pops up so early, but it's also highly debatable whether or not it's edible. When I say highly debatable, I mean a few brave souls think if cooked, it might be edible. So I was always told that it's poisonous and it emits a stinky smell, hence the name skunk cabbage. But other people have experimented with it and apparently the natives ate this when they were young in very small doses. Um, I'm not about to experiment myself. I am actually. But uh, if you want, Go for it. I wouldn't recommend it. Like Alice, I'm good at giving myself advice and not taking it. But it does look like something you could eat. It looks like a cabbage, hence the name Eastern Skunk Cabbage. So you can see why this would be attractive even to the novice. It's a very pretty weed, if you want to call it that. It flowers up into a kind of leafy cabbage-like thing. I'll get some pictures of it later this year to show you. But right now, apparently, is the best time to eat it. If you're going to eat it, just like most things, you want these young leaves. And they say roots as well. Again, I'm not about to eat it because I was always told it was poisonous. I am actually about to eat it. But that often just means that it makes some people sick. But I have a weak stomach, so I'm going to stay away from it. As you can see, there's more there. There's some over there inside the tire. And there's some really beautiful specimens over there. I'm gonna get closer shots up for you. I wanna show you what the inside looks like here. I hate to kill it. But... And check that out. Tell me that that is not. And, uh, I'm at, the bees do pollinate this, at least I believe. I see them flying around it all the time. Um, even now, I'm just warmed up a little bit and the honeybees are out. And there's the pollen. All right, I lied. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I gotta take a little taste of this. They say that even in your mouth, if it's, um, that, that this causes like a bad taste, hence the, uh, hence why it got dubbed poisonous. I'm gonna give it a go though. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Very skunky. Oh, that's nasty. I wouldn't recommend eating that. Even if it can be eaten, that was terrible. Very pretty plant though. Very faint tingling in my on my tongue, which is usually an indication that it's poisonous or won't agree with me. You know, maybe there's a method of preparing it, like boiling it that gets one of the chemicals out, but it tastes gross and uh, my tongue is definitely tingling. I don't know, I always gotta experience something myself before I believe it. That's gonna get me in trouble at some point, I'm sure. Like it hasn't already. All right, so it's been about two minutes since I tasted that piece and definitely a very distinguished tingling on my tongue and right around my mouth where it touched. Um, if that is edible, it isn't edible in that form. I doubt I'm gonna get sick. I washed my mouth out with water and didn't swallow it, but I guess it's a good way of testing, they say, if something is poisonous or not, but it was disgusting anyway. So even though it looks interesting, and even though they some people say that it is edible, it isn't edible in that form, which is to say uncooked. Maybe if you cook it, but uh, just based on the taste, I wouldn't even bother. 
I'd wait until the ramps come up and go for the ramps. Yuck. So the roots are more toxic and the leaves, not the pod, might be more edible, but I just wouldn't bother. All right, I'm out in the open field now. I'm just checking in with you guys. It's been about five minutes since I tasted that skunkweed. Did not swallow, um, but I did chew it up a bit. My mouth definitely went numb and got irritated. It is still slightly that way. It got, it escalated a little bit to the point where I had to, um, well, I got a little bit frightened, not really, but uh, a little bit scared and thought, oh, oh, did I do something stupid? And it was probably stupid. Not probably, it was. But the point being is that it seems like it's on the mend. My mouth isn't tingling like it was. Um, but in large amounts, it can be, they say, fatal. So I'm sure somebody died at some point from eating this. Definitely want to let your kids know about it because just one of those plants that uh, a young kid would definitely probably pluck and put in his mouth. And it wasn't pleasant, and I ate a very little amount. So a large amount could swell your throat closed, and if you weren't close to an emergency room or something, you could be in trouble. All right, guys. I'll let you know if anything changes, but I think it's on its way out. Wasn't very long lasting, but uh, was potent. So stay away is my advice, stay away. So I've often touched the skunk cabbage in the past. And while they do have a like faintly oleaginous feel to it, I've never had any irritation on my hands. So take it for what it's worth. There's not much in the literature about that. But if you're concerned about your kids touching them and then touching their mouths, that may be something to be concerned with, though it seems like it needs to be chewed up. No issue with my hands. That's all I'm trying to say. No issue with the hands. So I do wonder, since there is some traditional report of these being used as a medicine, if one of the uses might not be if you had a, a sore throat to take a little of this in your mouth and uh, swish it around and then spit it out because it really did give a numbing effect. Though slightly unpleasant, it might be less unpleasant than having an extremely sore throat. I am not recommending this, not Dr. Kevin, just, just a guy who loves the woods. Just throwing it out there. Don't eat this plant. It's just an interesting plant for a lot of reasons. It gives off its own heat, melts the snow around it, looks like something from an alien planet, smells and tastes terrible, and is highly poisonous to us, homo sapiens. All right, guys, I just got back to the shop from my walk. It's been about four hours since I ate the skunk cabbage, and I do want to report that there is the faintest of tingling left on my tongue and on the inner lips, almost like I ate some pepper or ate something heavy in pepper. Um, there was for a minute like a tingling in my stomach. Uh, I wouldn't associate that with it. It could have been anything. It could have been a placebo, but I am 100% convinced now that skunk cabbage or skunk weed is highly toxic and I would stay away from it. Final words.